In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth. Fiat. Okay. Well, I have to say that the men and women did very well. So the reason I, you got the, the uh, YouTube on the bottom is if you could learn this. This is a very important prayer because uh, this is the prayer of the divine will. Uh, the, the, the coming of the Holy Spirit is, is what the divine will is all about. It's the, it's the sanctification of mankind. And uh, what our job is, it's to get ready for this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Okay, this is what's coming. This is what the Holy Father, John Paul II, told us to do in, uh, to get ready for the year 2000. He says, get ready for the glory of the church, the new springtime of mankind. So what's coming is a, a whole new beginning for mankind. And a lot of people say, well, what time are we living in? And um, a lot of the Protestants are, are saying, because of... Uh, Israel, you know, it, God has brought the Jews back to Jerusalem, to, to and then Jerusalem in, in, in first of all Israel in 1948 and Jerusalem in 1967. That we are living in this glorious time um, uh, where God is pulling His His people back to their home, which was promised in, in throughout sacred scripture. Uh, but even a greater proof of the time that we're living in is Louisa Picaretta. Uh, why? Well, she died in 47 to prepare basically the world for 48. Uh, she, uh, uh, Pope, excuse me, Padre Pio died in 68, which is basically right after Jerusalem was, was uh, brought back into the Jew as, as the, the capital for the Jews. And now, Luisa's writings were given out in 1996. Jesus says, I've waited 6,000 years to give these writings to the world. Uh, these writings are, are, these are, this is to help the world embrace this universal life, this Catholic life. Uh, in, in volume 24, Jesus says that the Jews will be, become Catholic. And then the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Muslims, the Protestants, everyone will possess this Catholic life, this universal life. Now, Louisa uh, uh, was basically, the writings were, were, were released in 96. 
Her cause began in 94. Um, the, 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 Trani, uh, the, the, the Diocese of Trani uh, said to the Vatican in 2005, we believe that she should be canonized. So in the February of 2006 is when these writings were begun to be read in the Vatican. And the theologians have read them. They said, yes, this, there's nothing wrong with these writings. These are glorious writings. Uh, there's been some trouble in the United States. Okay, so the Vatican says, well, let's look at the writings again. Uh, see, some people are saying you don't need the Mass, you don't need the Rosary, you don't need, you're doing divine acts. So they said, if Louisa has said this, then we got to stop her. So the Vatican is now reading again for the third time, and uh, we're very close. So where we are in the world is the devil sees Louisa, and he recognizes that a human has been given the gift that was given to Adam. See, Jesus had this gift. He's the son of God. Mary had this gift. She's the mother of God. Adam had this gift, who was a human. And now, after 2,000 years of the redemption, sanctification is taking place. How, how can this be? Well, it's because the, Jesus says, now is the time. So with the devil seeing what's going on, you know, everybody's panicking. Oh, uh, you know, everything, everybody's, uh, my goodness, hang on, you know, hang on to your hats. Here we go for the, the last ride of the roller coaster. And... What's happening is Louisa is going to be manifest. Uh, the church is going to say yes to Louisa. When the church says yes to Louisa, the time of the devil is over. It's, it's done. The time of, of sin, worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, sin is gone. That's why John Paul II says get ready for the third millennium. Get ready for the glory of the church, the new springtime of mankind. So where are we? Well, it's the time of this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This great outpouring of the Holy Spirit is very, very close. That's why there's all these um, mystics, uh, locutionists who are saying, you know, hang on to your hats. This is going to happen and that's going to happen and this is going to happen. Well, a lot's going to happen. Uh, and it's all going to happen basically, as Our Lady has said, in a domino effect. It's just going to Everything's going to begin. Why? Because the time has come to give this universal life back to mankind. So the whole retreat or the whole day of recollection now is about Louisa. Uh, the 36 volumes are about Louisa Picaretta. To read the volumes correctly is when Jesus says you, he's not talking about me. He's not talking about you. He's talking about Louisa. You, the one, Louisa. So that's how you have to read the divine will. And, and what, what you will experience is not that you are doing divine acts, but what Louisa has, this is what God has given to Louisa. This is what God breathed into Louisa. A, a human has this universal life again. And uh what, what is going to happen is, as we read, as we study, as we put this into practice, uh, a, a whole new beginning is going to come to mankind. So this uh, day of recollection is about Louisa. She's the true little newborn of the most holy divine will. And as, as we understand this, we're going to go to Louisa more and more throughout our day. Uh, we're going to go to Why? We're going to go to Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve. We're going to go to them through Louisa. Now, what we've learned in the church is St. Louis de Montfort to go to Jesus, to go to Jesus through Mary. Uh, totus to us, to go to Jesus through Mary. And now Jesus is saying, I want you to go to me and my mother, the new Adam and the new Eve, in order to receive this abundant life through little Louisa. So what we're going to start here on volume 12, uh, February 4th, 1919. Beloved daughter, Louisa, newborn of my life, come into my holy divine will. Come and see how there is, how much there is to substitute for, 
for my many acts, still suspended yet not substituted for by creatures. Uh, uh, so here, see, see, to be in God's image and likeness is what Adam possessed. When Adam fell, uh, it took the Holy Catholic Church to give to man uh, this abundant life through baptism. So baptism, we are in God's image, okay? Now, Jesus is saying, because of Louisa, I want you to be in my likeness. To be in the likeness of God is to do what God does. That's what the likeness is. So come and see how much there is to substitute for. Uh, okay, our, our life is to learn the, uh, the prayer of the round of creation and the prayer of the round of redemption. Uh, okay, what we've learned for the last 2,000 years is the prayer of the saints. Uh, we've learned the prayer of St. Ignatius, the prayer of St. Teresa, the prayer of, uh, of all the great saints, St. Saint Francis. We, we learned them. We, we prayed them. Well, now Jesus is saying, I want you to pray the way I prayed. Our Lady is saying, I want you to pray the way I prayed. So how do we learn this prayer of Jesus, this prayer of Mary? It's through the newborn, Louisa. That's what he says. You are the newborn. You are the firstborn. You are the one. You are, the, you are going to be the mother of the second generation of the children of light. I'm going to give. I'm going to breathe. This is the Holy Spirit. I'm going to breathe this life into my children again. As I breathe into Adam, this, this image and likeness. When Jesus rose from the dead, he breathed on the apostles. The, the, he showed them, yes, the sacrament of baptism is necessary to be in God's image. Now, Jesus breathed into Louisa. Now, we, we are going to be in God's likeness. We're going to do what God does. You're in the likeness, image and likeness of your parents because you walk like them. You talk like them. You laugh like them. You, you, you're in the likeness, image and likeness. And now God is saying... My acts are still suspended. No human has substituted for uh, my acts yet. So he says, this is what I, I want to teach you, Louisa. So he says, my holy, my, my holy divine will must be within you, Louisa. As the primary gear of a clock, if it moves, all the other gears move. So who is the primary gear of the divine will? Louisa Picaretta. And the clock signals the hours and the minutes. So all the accord is in the motion of this primary wheel, Louisa Picaretta. And if this first wheel has no motion, the clock is stopped. And that's what's happened. No one has had this gift. And this is why some people can't embrace Louisa because they said, where's the saints? How come St. Francis didn't have this? How come St. Thomas didn't have this? How come St. Clair didn't have this? And what Jesus says, it's not been given until now, 2,000 years later. And again, this is not a new revelation for redemption. There's nothing new in revelation for redemption. This is about sanctification. And Jesus says, now is the time that this clock, this motion is going to take place. So he says, in the same way, the first wheel, which is within you, Louisa, must be my holy divine will, which must give motion to your thoughts, into your heart, into your desires, to everything. See, who loved Jesus? More than anyone was the Blessed Mother. The, the, the Son of God and the Mother of God were one in that love. That's why... Jesus is the sacred heart of Jesus. Mary is the immaculate heart of Mary. The two hearts are alike, mother and son. Jesus is blood of her blood, bone of her bone, flesh of her flesh. That's why when you, go hold, when you receive Holy Communion, you're receiving Jesus and Mary. I remember the first time we were taught that in the seminary, the, those that were Protestant in their thinking were very angry. They wanted nothing to do with Our Lady. Yet those who were in love with Our Lady were astonished. Wow, we're receiving Jesus and Mary. And see, that's what the divine will is. How do we enter into this abundant life of Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve? Well, 
Jesus says it's going to happen through Louisa. So what happens is every thought, every word, every deed becomes a new abundant life. Why? For the glory of God and the sanctification of souls. So it's not just your family that you're praying for. That's, that's a saintly thing and a good thing and a holy thing. What God is asking of us is to pray in the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. That's what God does. What a human does is a human prays for their family. Oh, I pray for my son. Oh, I pray for my daughter. Oh, I pray for my family. Oh, I pray for my brothers. Oh, I pray for my sisters. And they focus on that. And we try to bargain with God. Please, 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 please. Come on, you got to do this. Come on, you got to do this. Come on, you got to do. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's been the prayers of the saints. What Jesus is saying is, no, I want something different. I want you to pray the way I prayed. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. I want you to pray the way my mother prayed. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. So this is what's coming. In all your thoughts, all your words, all your deeds. And since my holy divine will is the central wheel of my being, of God, who possesses... Who possesses the central wheel of God, he says is Louisa, of creation of all things. Your motion, Louisa, coming out of that center in you, Louisa, will come to substitute for as many acts of all creatures, past, present, and future. Do you see how she's not just praying for her family? It's not just a good thing, a holy thing, a saintly thing. She's praying in the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. That's what God is asking of us. Multiplicate, multiplying in the motion of all as central motion, it will come to play before my throne on their behalf. See, it's, see as Catholics, we, under, we understand multiplication. When a priest says Mass... And has the host. It's not just one host and you break the host and you hear you have 10%. Oh, no, you have 1%. No, you, there's 100 people. You have 1%. You have one. It's a multiplication of God. I mean, we understand this as Catholics. It's part of our heritage. Why? This is the life that God wants for everyone. So Jesus is saying this multiplication and the motion of, of all as central motion will come to place before my throne on everyone's behalf the acts of all creatures and will substitute for everything you see so uh, again we can't limit god god has got some great plans for mankind he wants universal restoration that's 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 what the divine will is all about so if if we're if, we're, if we understand what God is doing, we link ourselves to Louisa. Okay? We're one with Louisa. Why? Because she has the true life of Jesus and the true life of Mary. Why? Because she's the newborn. And God wants us to be newborn. So this is what he says. Therefore, be attentive. He says this to Louisa and he says this to us. Your mission linked to Louisa is great and fully divine. God's going to do this. Now, if we if we love Jesus, if we love Mary, if we love the church, if we're faithful to the Holy Father, the vicar of Christ on earth, great things are going to happen. Not only for our family, but for all the world. So our, our job is to repair, to redo in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future. So when you see something in the newspaper or on television that is horrible, we say, number one, thank you, Jesus, for showing me this. Number two, I'm sorry it's happening to you, Jesus. And number three, I want to repair. I want to redo in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future as if this act never occurred, as if this act, I mean, uh, is completely renovated. See, it's the prayer of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful Catholics and kindle in us the fire of your love. That's the divine will. Send forth your spirit. Breathe into us. Send forth your spirit and we will be recreated. And then you, Holy Spirit, 
will transform the face of the earth through us. See, God, he saved the best for last. And he's asking us to participate with Jesus and Mary through Louisa so that the kingdom of God, the fulfillment of the Our Father, can happen on earth as it is in heaven. Volume 16, uh, November 15, 1923. My beloved good, your words confuse me. It's, it's, the word in Italian is not confused, but more like bewildered. She's bewildered. She's just astonished. She's, wow, what does this mean? She says, even more, they annihilate me so much that I feel like a little newborn baby whose limbs are not yet well formed. And there is, therefore, it is necessary to swaddle her. And, and while swaddling clothes are still necessary to form me, you want to unswaddle me. But what do you want? To make me stretch my little baby hands and embrace your eternal will? My Jesus, don't you see? I, Louisa, can't reach. I, Louisa, can't hold the divine will. I, Louisa, am too little. Moreover, if it pleases you so much that your holy divine will reign upon earth, why did you wait so long? Again, 2,000 years. And why, when you came upon earth, you, Jesus, did not do both things? That is, the redemption and sanctification, the fiat voluntas tua on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus, your arms were strong and long enough to embrace your intermittable will. See, see, oh Jesus, mine are weak and short. How can I, Louisa, do that? And Jesus, again, my poor little child, you are right. My words confuse you, overwhelm you. And the divine light of my will eclipses you, Louisa. The divine will renders you, Louisa, the true newborn of the supreme will. Louisa, come into my arms. I, Jesus, will swaddle you, Louisa, with the clothes of my most holy divine will. See, Adam, when Adam sinned, he, he recognized that he was naked. He lost the clothing of divinity. God wants to reclothe us with divinity. That's why when Jesus shows us who he is on Mount, on Mount Tabor in the Transfiguration, he's clothed in the sun. That's why Our Lady the, the only true, well, one of the true images of Our Lady from heaven uh, the, on the tilma of Our Lady Guadalupe, uh, which is the symbol of the divine will, uh, Our Lady of the divine will, she's clothed in the sun. Jesus says about Louisa, all the saints before you, Louisa, were stars at night. How beautiful the stars look at night. He says, you, Louisa, are a sun at high noon. And through you, you will give light and life to everyone and everything. Why? Not because of you, Louisa, but because of Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve who reign in you, who are alive in you. So this sunlight, this clothing of divinity is going to happen to us. That's why when this new era fully happens, we will look at ourselves now, and we were saying, we will say now we are living dead compared to the abundant life of the divine will. That's what's coming very quickly. That's why the devil is going to flee. He can't be here. See, when the kingdom of God comes on earth as it is in heaven, the devil has been banished from, from heaven. When heaven comes to earth, he can't, he's going to be banished. He and his followers can't stay here. Only the children of, of Jesus and Mary, only the children of the new Adam and the new Eve, which Jesus says uh, is, are the children living in the divine will. That's why he says the chastisement that is coming, well, it'll have little or no effect upon the children of the divine will. He says that the survivors of this fire from heaven symbolized by the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, the survivors will be living in the divine will. So our job is to live this for everyone, not only our family, but for everyone, past, present, and future, to live this abundant life, to live this heaven on earth. And as we, as we read this, as we study this, as we put this into practice, we begin to live the true life of Jesus the true life of Mary through the newborn, 
the, the mother of the second generation of the children of light, which is uh, Louisa Picaretta. So Jesus says, uh, I will clothe you with my own divine will, so that the divine will may strengthen your limbs, limbs with its fortitude, so it will be easy for you, Louisa, to hold tightly in your little arms that eternal will which wants to come and reign in you, Louisa, with so much love. See, the Franciscans follow St. Francis. The Dominicans follow St. Dominic. The Benedictines follow St. Benedict. Why? They want to embrace the life that these saints possessed. What we want is the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary, in Louisa's arms. That's who God gave it to. Volume 16, November 28, 1923. Louisa says, I always felt submerged, drowned in the ocean of the most holy divine will of Jesus. And I seemed to see my little soul like a newborn baby whom blessed Jesus raised in his arms through the breath of his will. Again, he breathes into Louisa, this, this breath of God, this outpoint of the Holy Spirit with such jealousy as to want her to look at nothing, to hear nothing, to touch nothing but the divine will. See, this is, this is not just good, holy, and saintly. It's not just to be a good person, a saintly person, a, a, a holy person. It's to, it's to live the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary. So he wants us to enter into the family of Louisa. That's what we talked about the last time. What is this family of Louisa? It's to live an abundant life of Jesus and Mary that Louisa possesses. So he wants us to look at nothing else. He wants us to hear nothing else. He wants us to touch nothing else. Again, our God is asking us to begin to live a Lenten life. Okay, what does that mean? To get rid of the th unnecessary things. Now, the, the, remember, uh, just recently they said that the games that the children are playing, uh, these these games that are on the internet that they can, that they're always they're in their hands and they're moving their thumbs all over the place. These games are taking up six million hours of the children's time in the last twelve years. Six million. hours wasted hours they're gone they're completely gone now that's just the games we're not talking about television we're not talking about movies we're not talking about music that the that the youth are involved in we're not talking about uh, uh the soccer hockey tennis football basketball golf uh, uh we're not talking about the sports where they're where they're spending their hours of wasted time that's why Jesus said, Louisa, don't waste a moment. Our job is to repair for all those wasted hours. Okay? Don't look at anything else but the divine will. Don't hear anything else but the divine will. Don't touch anything else but the divine will. You see what, what the Lord is saying? Get ready for heaven on earth. Prepare the world for heaven on earth. And so that nothing might distract her, Jesus kept her enchanted with the sweet enchantment of his teachings on his most holy divine will. And the same thing for us. As we read these volumes, we are enchanted by the teachings of God. And I, I've heard so many people for so many years say when they're discouraged, when they're oppressed, when they are, um, uh, when the negativity is so great, they go to the writings and they're happy. Why? Because these writings are from heaven. These writings are Jesus, the word of God, dictating these words to Louisa. And as you read these words, and he says, there are many books out there. The only book that can transform a soul, Jesus says, is the book of heaven. Why? Because the word of God has dictated these words. And as you read these words, they transform you. As Jesus says, they transmute you. And, and this is what's coming. It's, it's a whole 
beginning. So it's the same thing. God wants us drowned in this ocean of the divine will. He doesn't want us... No, why? Because Jesus says the 36 volumes are basically Louisa exiting the ocean of the divine will, and it's the drops of water that come off her body. That's the 36 volumes. And the 36 volumes are to prepare us to dive into the ocean of the divine will with Louisa, to drown in the ocean of the divine will with Louisa. We don't want to look at anything else but the divine will. We don't want to hear anything else but the divine will. We don't want to touch anything else but the divine will. So this Lenten, like I talked talk about before, this Lenten life is to get rid of the things of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Now, each year in Lent, you're asked to give up something more. And, and by the time you end your life, if you've really struggled to be a Catholic... By the time you end your life, you'll be stripped of everything so that you can give up your heartbeat, so that you can give up your breath, and you can say, I am totally yours. See, but the world says, gimme, gimme, gimme. I want more. I want more. I want more. Of what? The world, the flesh, and the devil. So we want to give up the world, the flesh, and the devil with our intellect, our memory, and our will so that all we have is the memory of Christ. Do this in memory of me. Uh, the, our, our intellect, we think in things in, through the, uh, the mind of Christ. We understand things from the mind of Jesus, not from a human perspective, but from a divine perspective. And finally, from our intellect, our memory, we go to the will of God. Then we can enter into the divine will. We use our free will to choose, no longer our human will, but the divine will. So Jesus says, uh, so he's going to enchant us with the sweet enchantment of his teachings of the most holy divine will. And the little newborn, Luisa Picaretta, was raised and nourished with the breath of the will of her Jesus. Sanctification. And not only this, but Jesus covered Luisa with many little crosses of divine light in such a way that I, Louisa, in looking at myself, I could only see a cross of light impressed in every part of me. So again, you see the clothing of divinity that God is giving her. And Jesus amused himself now with multiplying these crosses, now in wanting me to keep my gaze fixed on him in order to count in all of his words, which serves me as food, which is a means to grow in the divine will. Remember, Jesus said, I have a food that you do not know of. That's to, to live in the divine will. Then afterwards, my Jesus told me, my little daughter, Louisa, my do, newborn of my most holy divine will, my holy divine will conceived you, Louisa, made you, Louisa, be born, and now raises you, Louisa, with its full, with all of its love. So again, what does Jesus say? Louisa is conceived in the divine will. Louise was made to that divine will. Louise was born in the divine will. And God raises Louisa with all of its divine love. The human is not there. That's one of the reasons why Jesus tells Louisa, I was so jealous of you, I did not even want your parents to hug you or to kiss you. I mean, that's, he says, you're totally mine. Now, in our own lives, the same thing happens. If you're not hugged or kissed, that's because of God's jealousy. And if you don't understand that, you don't understand the love of God. So don't you see with how much love I, Jesus, hold you, Louisa, in my arms, allowing you, Louisa, to take no food other than the breath of my most holy divine will. He breathes into Louisa this life of sanctification. It is the most beautiful, the most dear, the most precious thing which has been delivered in creation until now. And that is the newborn of my most holy divine will. Again, what is Jesus doing? He's saying very clearly that Louisa begins where Adam left off. The preternatural life of integrity, impassibility, immutability, and immortality. The preternatural life. 
And what the saints have received in the last 2,000 years, well, even some of the saints in the Old Testament, is a life of transfiguration, to be transfigured in God. Uh, Jesus wants more than that. He wants us to be transmuted in him. So you look at, he says, the greatest thing that it gave to the Old Testament was transfiguration. So here's God, Christ on, on Mount uh, Tabor, and the outside changes into light, but the inside stays the same. He says, that's the greatest gift I gave to the Old Testament. Then he says, the greatest gift that I gave to the New Testament is transubstantiation. At Holy Mass, the priest says, this is my body, and it looks like bread, it tastes like bread, but in reality, it's the body, blood, soul, and the divinity of God Almighty. That Eucharist is worthy to be worshipped. We fall on our knees to look at God in the Blessed Sacrament. And now he says, I've saved the best for last. Transmutation. I'm going to transmutate my, my children. What does that mean? It means inside and out. Not just the outside and not the inside. Not just the inside and not the outside. It's inside and out is changed into a completely different element. Jesus says, basically, it is the most beautiful, the most dear, the most precious thing that which has been delivered in creation until now. And that is Louisa the newborn of my holy divine will. That's for our benefit. Do we understand who this Louisa Picaretta is? She's not another Mary. She's not another Jesus. She is the true uh, uh, newborn of Jesus and Mary. If you want to think, Adam's newborn was Cain. What did Cain do? The first sin, murder. Of his own brother. The newborn of Jesus Mary. This is why God is saying. This is the greatest most beautiful. Most precious thing that has been delivered to creation. Until now. Louisa Picaretta. The newborn of my holy divine will. Can you imagine what this means? This is why the Vatican. Going over this. is they're, they're, They keep on going. This is amazing. This is why when you read. What the Holy Father is saying. He's always talking about the divine will. He knows what this means. It's a whole new beginning for mankind. The new evangelization is not what everybody thinks it is at this point. The new evangelization is the divine will. That's the new evangelization. And, and the church is getting us ready, get ready, get ready. Who's ready for this new evangelization? And then God is going to show us Louisa. Therefore, I, Jesus, will keep you, Louisa, with such jealousy as to let no one touch my newborn. No one is going to hurt Louisa. God is, God is going to, as St. Saint, Saint Padre Pio said, Jesus is going to reveal Louisa to the world. Jesus is going to do this. My holy divine will will be everything for you, Louisa. My holy divine will will be your life will be your food, will be your garment, will be your clothing, will be your cross, because being the greatest thing, it would be unbefitting for your Jesus to mix the divine will with other things, even holy things, which are not a birth from our most holy divine will. So you can see God is beginning again all of mankind through this little newborn. Again, She's not the Blessed Mother. The Blessed Mother is the Theotokos, the Mother of God. Louisa is the newborn, a human, who God is going to use to bring about the, the, the universal restoration of mankind. Therefore, forget about everything, so that no waters may surround you, Louisa Picaretta, inside or no, other than the immense ocean sea of my most holy divine will. I, Jesus, want in you, Louisa, the honor, the nobility, and the decorum of a true newborn daughter of my most holy divine will. This is an amazing thing. And again, this is one of the things that the, the Vatican is reading. And they can't believe that there are people in the United States who are saying that they're living this life. This is Louisa's life. Yet God is offering this to us if Louisa is in us. 
if, if God can see the DNA of Louisa in us, then we will be part of the second generation of, uh, of, the, of, of light. That Louisa is the mother of the second generation of the children of light. But if we don't have Louisa, we, we, we don't, there's no way that we can possess this. On hearing this, instead of rejoicing, I felt like dying of confusion. See, because Louisa, <coughs> being little, excuse me, <coughs> being little is overwhelmed. She, Louisa says, I am nothing. God is everything. That's Louisa's life. That's why God loves Louisa so much. So she's, again, overwhelmed. I only had the courage to say, Jesus, my love, I, Louisa, am little. It is true. I my, myself see it. But I'm also a little bad. Yet, you are saying all this. How can it be? Do you not perhaps want to make fun of me? I know that many times you cry, and so to move away from my, your crying, you want to amuse yourself with me by making these jokes. So, so she says, Jesus, you're joking with me. There, there's no way that I am the newborn. Again, that's great. That's the humility of Louisa. Today, anybody who gets a slight locution, whether it's from God or from the devil, say, look how great I am. I'm going to tell you what God said to about me. Louisa was the, you know, the God, you're joking with me. I am nothing. And even though I feel the confusion of your jokes, do them anyways and let them be jokes of your most holy divine will. And Jesus, pressing me more tightly to himself, continued, don't know your Jesus is not making fun of you, Louisa. I amuse myself, yes, and the sure sign that uh, that what I, Jesus, tell you, Louisa, is true is the crosses of light with which my holy divine mar will marked you, Louisa. Again, the clothing of light, the clothing of divinity. Know, my daughter, Louisa, that the largest and the longest cross which never left me was the divine will for my humanity, and even more. Every act of the human will opposite to the divine was a distinct cross which the supreme will impressed into the most intimate part of my humanity. In fact, when the human will moves from earth in order to act, the divine will moves from heaven in order to meet the human will and to form one single act together with its own to make torrents of graces, torrents of light, torrents of sanctity flow in that act and by not receiving the encounter with the divine, it is as if the human will put itself at war against its creator, rejecting into the celestial regions the good, the light, the sanctity, which are about to be poured upon it. You see what Jesus is saying? When you do your act in the divine will, Louisa, and this is what we're learning, to do our act in the round of, round of creation, round of redemption, as you learn to do your act Divine good, divine light, divine sanctity are being poured upon the earth. So again, when we link ourselves to Louisa, come divine will, come breathe in my breathing. When our, with our preternatural, uh, with our uh, uh, preveni act in the morning, come divine will, come breathe in my breathing, beat in my heart beating, you know, walk in my walk and talk, my, whatever we're doing. When we do our actual acts throughout the day, Regions of good, regions of light, regions of sanctity are coming upon the earth, transforming the face of the earth, if we are one with Louisa. So the supreme will offended wanted to re be repaired by me in every act of the human wills. It inflicted a cross upon me, and even though I, Jesus, received together with the crosses all the good which had been rejected by souls, in order to keep it disposed in me for the time when the creature would be disposed to receive the encounter with the divine will in her acts, in spite of all this, I could not be exempt from feeling the intense pain of so many crosses. Look at me. Now that's one of the things that God wants. When we're in front of the Blessed Sacrament, look at Jesus. You know, put down your holy books, put down your holy prayers. Look at Jesus. When the priest says, this is the Lamb of God, look at Jesus. It's very important that our eyes look upon the Lord. He says, look at me in my interior, how many billions of crosses my humanity contained. Therefore, the crosses of my will were incalculable. Its pain was infinite. And I, Jesus, moaned under the weight of an infinite pain. This infinite pain had such power as to give me death in every instant and to give me a cross for each act of the human will opposite uh, to the divine. 
The cross of my holy divine will was not made of wood, which makes one feel only its weight and pain. Rather, it is a cross of light and of fire, which burns and consumes and imprints itself in such a way as to form one single thing with nature itself. So here, uh, again, it's like the, the prayer of the saints. St. Saint John of the Cross, St. Teresa of Avila, St. Catherine of Siena. Let me be burned in the burning holocaust of your love. Let me be annihilated in the flames of your heart. Let me be consumed in the burning furnace of your charity. That prayer of the saints is now manifesting itself. In whom? In Jesus and Mary and now through Louisa. If I, Jesus, wanted to tell you, Louisa, about the cross of my divine will, gave me the cross, I should braid all the acts of the creatures and make them present to you, Louisa, to let you, Louisa, find out for yourself how the divine will demanding fair satisfaction inflicted on me cross upon cross. Was it perhaps not a human will to offend the divine and to break it up with it? So now a divine will had to crucify and grieve my human nature and will. All the rest of man can be called superficial, the source, the root, the substance of either evil or good. It is in the depth of his most of his human will. Okay. So God is showing us that where is your life? It, it, it depends on your will. What do you choose to do? When, when you go to confession, it's because of your human will. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is what I thought. This is what I said. This is what I did. This is what I failed to do. That's that's the human way. He says, he says, so he says, the source, the root, the substance of either good or evil is in the depth of the human will. Therefore, only the divine will could make me expiate the evil of so many human wills. This is why I, Jesus, want you, Louisa, all in my most holy divine will to make known what this divine will has done what the divine will made me suffer and what the divine will wants to do. And this is why you, Louisa, are marked with many crosses of light because your cross, Louisa, has been my holy divine will, which has changed everything into light and to dispose you, Louisa, to be the true newborn of my holy divine will to whom I, Jesus, will entrust the divine secrets, the divine joys and the divine pains of the divine will to its faithful daughter who united to my divine acts may open the heavens to make the divine will descend upon earth, to make the divine will known, to make the divine will received, and to make the divine will loved. That's the role of Louisa. So I'll end there. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.